In this final lesson, we'll integrate all of our particle effects and also utilize a script that addresses some of the particle effect components. So the first order of business is probably going to be integrating the smoke with the jet. So if I look at my jet particles here and I turn on the game object, simulate, and then I also select my smoke effect. I'm going to turn this on. I click simulate. And I'm going to select the jet particles here. Well, for one, I probably would want to move the smoke a little closer. Okay, and the jet. Okay, and let's play this. I want to see how it looks on a darker background. Okay, so right away we are seeing a problem. Sometimes the jet is covered up by the smoke, sometimes it is not. Now, uh, this may be a problem, this may be not. Um, for me, I always want the jet to be on top. I don't want it covered. And you'll see what the difference will be when I use something called the sorting fudge parameter on the particles. So if I go here, if I go into the smoke, if I scroll all the way down, go into my renderer, you'll see this parameter called sorting fudge. The lower this number, the more precedence the particle will have over other transparent objects, including other particle systems. Now, this is not based on a particle system basis. This is based on a particle basis. So I'm going to take this value and I'm going to take the other value and really make the difference count. So if this is zero, and uh, once again, zero is the most precedent, or you can actually even go to the negative numbers, but whatever number is smallest will have the highest precedence. And if I go into the sorting fudge for the jet, and I'll create one, we won't see a difference, but if I create a thousand, right away we see the jet being covered up by the smoke. So we want to do the opposite. I'm going to leave this as zero and the smoke I'll instead list as 1000. So now we will always have the jet on top. Next I want to have a short overview over the materials that we're using. Now in the shaders that you have there's going to be a category for shaders called particles. This is a little out of the screen but if you look it up there's additive, additive soft, alpha blended, alpha blended multiply, multiply, multiply double, vertex slicks blended, and additive multiply. I'll only be using two of these, alpha blended and additive. Also notice that there's a mobile category for shaders and within that category of shaders there's going to be a subcategory called particles. If you go into the particles, you will discover a few of those shaders, but they are going to be a little bit more efficient. Now I'm developing for the desktop, so I'm going to be using just the regular particle subcategory, not the mobile ones. Now the specific one that I want to mention is the alpha blended shader. And so if I go into particles and if I choose alpha blended, this will allow me to control the tint of the particle more because then I can make things darker without the uh, black being a grayscale effect for the alpha because I want to have a gray plume of smoke, a dark gray. So I'm going to leave it as alpha blended. The fire, however, is particles additive because for me I do want to continuously add on this effect. The more fire you have, the more additive it is, the brighter it is. Muzzle flash, we're going to be seeing it from uh, further away. So in this case, I'm going to be using another shader, which is from the mobile subcategory. Lastly, I do want to set up our controls for uh, firing the machine guns and also show you a couple of the things on how we can control particle systems in a very elementary way. So in your 
code folder in your source assets, go ahead and open up Hero Mover, just double click on it, and it will open up Mono Develop. So I'm seeing a few functions here, and in the update function, it is running all of them. Um, this is just the control to turn and to move. We're not going to be concerning us with this. And then there's a few public variables to change them. Now, the ones that we're mostly interested is the muzzles and the lights. Now, I'm going to be getting a Boolean value from the input class here. So when the user presses down space, it's going to run every single command within this field. Now, what is it doing? There's a for each statement, which is going through every single particle system within my array of particle systems here. So instead of setting up muzzle right or muzzle left, I simply set up an array with two of them, and it's going through every single one of the particle systems within the array, and it's doing something. So what is it doing here? It is simply playing them. I'm addressing the particle system, and I'm saying, start releasing your particles, start the cycle. Now, next, I'm not going to be addressing a particle system. All I'm going to be doing is going through the lights and turning them on. Now, I'm not going to be using an intensity component for the lights. I'm simply turning off the game object. And to do that, technically, I could just add a transform, but I want to uh, limit the person that's going to be putting the level together to simply adding on the lights so then we don't get another object added that is not a light and possibly have other issues. So next I'm saying an else if statement. So if this is not happening, but this is happening, if the user releases the space key. And in this case, I want all of the particles uh, to clear out from the muzzle and to stop the cycle completely. And then I'm going into the light and I'm making it false. I'm turning it off. Now, if this is somewhat confusing to you, I would suggest going through our introduction to coding in Unity, which will explain some of these concepts. But in either case, um, mostly I'm going to just explain just the starting and stopping the particle effect systems and that you can access a lot of these components in the particle system through code. So what I'm going to do next is simply take the objects which I want this to affect and drag them as in public parameters. So I'm going to go back to Unity. Click on my hero here, the space carrier. And we see that there is two spots for the lights because I specified the size of the area being two and two spots for the muzzles. Now, when I was originally scripting this course, I was thinking of applying some code to the exhaust as well. But for the sake of brevity, I think we should just stick with the muzzles and the controls. They are enough to demonstrate. So because we've got these public parameters here, we need to drag in the game objects in order to actually have the script have an effect on any of this. So now, as you may remember, even if we do something in play mode, I can't drag the space carrier because it is none of these objects. If I drag in the muzzle here as one of the particle systems, and then I exit out of play mode, all of this will not be set. So I need to do this in edit mode. That's easy enough. I simply take this game object and I drag it on. If you decide to have more of these lights or more game objects, all you'll need to do is simply increase this array here it won't break the script. Uh, it'll simply run through every single light and it'll perform the action on it. Same for the muzzles. So let's look at the lights here. Once again, uh, the script I intend to be very simple. Probably if you are setting up a game, you could look for each child object for the light. But in this case, just for the sake of simplicity, I am setting them all up as public parameters. So light here and light here. Considering these muzzles will be triggered off by a script, we need to make sure that they're actually starting off and then they are turned on whenever I press space. So if we go into our particle effect here, 
we need to make sure we turn off play on awake and now that we have two of them this will be a good opportunity to apply the prefab to the other one as well so we have the right one selected click apply click on the left one and click revert this will usually happen by default but I like to press it anyway just to make sure now we need to go into the lights now I could do this via script I'm just going to turn them off manually and now we need to drag all of these as children of the space carrier to have them be moved around by the code so I select both of these guys I want the light point jet and I want the jet particles everything else is going to be outside and so let's take this baby for a spin okay looks like we've got our jet we've got our smoke and we've got our muzzle flash so hopefully by this point you got a pretty good introduction to shuriken and learned some of its components and are ready to fight off an alien invasion so as you can tell this is not exactly an exact science I've done a lot of creative experimentation to get this effect before even this tutorial started, so I kind of knew where to go with all of these values. So you can definitely use the effect that I've provided in the prefabs for reference, but also when you do create this, try just experimenting with other values. You can often get effects that you might not have expected, but you can still put that effect in your pocket and use it in the game in the future.